thank you for having me here in Riga. As a CEO, I, I have had like like gazillion uh, failures, I think. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, we could spend I think two days <laughs> explaining them, and and uh, and I, I really wanted to make it more practical. So uh, the presentation will be uh, like just explaining a couple a couple of very specific use cases. I think where every CIO faces whenever the government CIOs or the private sector CIOs in a bank or, or the, at the ministry. I mean, uh, you always will face the similar stuff. And it will be more like, uh, not about technical stuff, but more, uh, how say, organizational and institutional. Before we start, I mean, a um, couple of words mys about myself. Uh, I'm an engineer, so by education, by a hobby, everything. I mean, uh, all my life I've been doing only IT, so uh, I couldn't even, even, I couldn't do even something something different. I mean, uh, uh, I'm a nerd guy. But yeah, I'm a former Estonian government CIO. Uh, before that, I was an entrepreneur. Uh, I was the head of the largest software development house in Estonia. Uh, it's called Norton now. Uh, back then, uh, when we started, it was called Web Media. And uh, when I sold my shares in 2012, I became the, let's say, I couldn't compete in private sector, so I had to find a new challenge. And the student government was was like very eager to to give me that challenge, and they they said like if I come, they will like like support me with uh, with money, and then then they they also support me with like politically, and they kept their word. And to be honest, uh, as a CIO, uh, we had more money that we could meaningfully spend. So uh, we have to salute to our government. I mean, they fully backed up. One more thing, uh, I was in the office, uh, I promised them two years, I was four years because it was so so interesting, as I always say, I, I was like a kid in a candy store because it was so interesting, I mean like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, like, so uh, it, was, it was extremely interesting four years. But as an entrepreneur, you always want to come back to the private sector. And, um, uh, and it's important to know that I'm not the person behind the student ID card or, or X-Road, like, uh, uh, those things were put in place already 20 years ago. So, uh, and I still can't understand. I mean, those people who did that, uh, uh, they have to be extremely smart. And once again, uh, like politicians, they always make things like right way and wrong way. But one right way, what, what the Estonian, Estonian politicians have done and uh, that we should salute is that uh, they have always trusted engineers. So trust in the engineers, the, the thing what we're doing, if engineers say that like, we need to put this ID card thing or, or social security number thing, we have to put it in place, without that we can't build a information society, the government has always followed that, that uh, how say, advice and, and, and uh, supported it. Or, I mean, uh, the X-Road, the student famous X-Road, I mean, the engineers say that we have to have one system how to exchange the data between uh, institutions because it's efficient, it gives us cyber security in a proper way, uh, so it's secure, it uh, gives us data integrity, etc. I mean, like, it needs to be in place and it's on one and only system we should use. Cover salutes, the government salutes that and, and implements it. So all the smart decisions that were made like, uh, like 20 years ago, I mean, uh, to be frank, this is the picture we use uh, to, for, for politicians, the, the real picture is like this. So Estonian uh, government architecture is totally distributed. Like uh, basic information is cut in very small pieces and these pieces are actually kept in, in various locations. So uh, from cybersecurity perspective, even if, if one piece is fall, falling, I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, the, the whole system is open. So, uh, and that's important to remember when we start talking about the mistakes, because in Estonia, every institution is responsible of their own system. So, as a CIO, I can't say like that you have to use Java or you have to use Oracle or you have to use Microsoft. I can't tell that. They are independent with their decision. Like, they can decide. That's their world. Every CIO creates their own world. It's good. I mean, like, uh, it's good because different ministries, different silos, they have different development speed. And uh, if it would be centralized, it means that the tempo that uh, like this, this ecosystem could have depends on the power of the central system. 
But if you have like distributed architecture, the, the, the speed of innovation, the speed of development depends of, of, of uh, every, like one, one piece only. Like, so uh, so it, it, it's extremely faster and extremely simpler. Like Minister of Finance most probably uh, is able to move faster than Ministry of Agriculture, for example. And the Ministry of Agriculture shouldn't keep down the Ministry of Finance to, to actually boost their innovation rapidly. So uh, that's why I like it. And, and again, like, uh, this was put in place 20 years ago, and I think it's the same in, 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 in Latvia. But for example, in the US, big companies like Intel, BMW, they have started to advocate these kind of uh, systems uh, just a couple of years ago. So things that are obvious in Nordics are actually not so obvious in other countries. And uh, that's our power. But all that was put in place before me. So, I arrived to the government um, in the year 2013, and I, I found this slide, I mean, uh, in my slideshow in 2013, I have been quoting Trump, because I had the same kind of energy, I really wanted to change anything, everything, and I, I thought that now, I mean, like, uh, the government nearly needs this private sector energy and, 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 and power and new ideas and, and approach. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I, was, I was quoting Trump. I mean, I, I couldn't know that he actually ends up uh, like, like say, saying the things that he's saying or like wants to build a wall and all, 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 all that of shit. But uh, uh, not, that's not the thing about the Trump. I just wanted to give you the emotion I had when I started. And that was my first mistake, a huge one. I mean, uh, I went to the government, and uh, the attitude of, of private sector people about the government is that everybody's lazy, uh, nobody's doing their work, uh, there is like oh, huge inefficiency inside the government. That's the, that's the common understanding uh, from private sector side. And then you go there, and then you understand that, whoa, 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 it's, um, it's, up, it's totally vice versa. I have never worked as much as a CIO in my life. I mean, when I was a programmer, when, I was the, when we started our company, when I was a CEO, we, we, we worked hard, but we never worked as much as, as I had to work as a government CIO. And the people and team also, I mean, obviously there are always like some people who like, try to, how say, uh, go with the flow, uh, but in, uh, in most cases, like, they're hardworking people and they want to do interesting stuff. But you can't copy everything into private, from private sector to the public sector. So my first task was I wanted to uh, change the way how uh, IT projects are delivered in, in the government. So uh, before we even start to talk about IT, let's agree that we have some kind of business case. That we have, I mean, like we want to make something happen. We want to make something more efficient, like healthcare more efficient. We want to minister social affairs more efficient. Great, great, great ideas. But before you get the investment money, like give me the business case. And I was giving them like the the, the proper like uh, how say understanding how private sector does. So how private sector is doing it, like you get, get the data set, you get your facts, and uh, you think about it. I mean, like, if you don't change anything, the world will go like this. And we don't like that. I mean, like, we want to change that. That's the point. So, like, let's put a goal, like, like okay, we want to make it like 50% of more efficient, or like, we want to earn uh, like 30 million euro more money. So we put the goal, and then we, we, then we, we describe a scenario that what if we do an IT project, uh, we expect that, that, that this, this, is, this should be the outcome, that the scenario should be the outcome. And then we deliver it, and then we, I mean, like, we, we like basically compare. Like, if you don't do anything, it goes like this. If you try to do anything, it might go like that, but it needs that kind of money. So we compare, and we get the business case. And then we decide, like, should we invest or not? And uh, whenever, I mean, like, we invest, we have the business case, we deliver, and then we have the results, and then we, like, learn from these results, and the whole picture starts again, like, like, a, like a closed loop. 
So, and always we can jump off and say, like, we don't want to do that investment. So, that's how private sector works. I mean, like, we have a business, we want to grow or we want to change the way how we serve our customers. We describe, like, we do, if you don't do anything, like, things don't get better. So, we need to make a change, we, we need to, to invest, and then we expect a certain result. So, uh, <clears throat> So, and I thought like that's the way how we should do, do it also in government. And I really, I, I pushed it through. So that's the way how they, 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 they work in Estonia. Like every ministry before they get any investment, they have to do very heavy justification. Before that it was like uh, who shouted louder got the money. Like, but now we have to do the justification, which is great. But it's a government. So, uh, I mean, yes, it's possible to, in the end of the day, to measure everything in money. But governments are not only money about, like, uh, if you save human life, uh, yes, we can say that, like, one human life means, let's say, one million euro for the, for the government. But there's always, um, like, certain areas uh, where we don't have a proper, like, uh, how say, uh, strong, uh, measurement uh, method. I mean, like you have to decide with your heart. I mean, like you think if I do this. I mean, I, for example, uh, if hospitals share information with each other, all, each other. I mean, you are patient. Something happens with you in South Estonia. You get treated in South Estonia, and then uh, in North Estonia. But you live in North Estonia, and you go to a doctor in North Estonia he or she actually can see what happened in South Estonia, can compare the x-ray pictures, like all this stuff. We can say it makes, increases the quality of, of, of healthcare because, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, like, you, 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 vote, you look at it and, and, and uh, it makes sense. But, but can we actually measure it? How much the healthcare gets better because of that, that hospitals are actually able to share information? And we can't do that. Or, I mean, uh, let's take digital signature. We know it's like way efficient compared with like a uh, uh, physical one. I mean, you don't have to print out the contract. You don't have to uh, invite uh, a courier to take your contract to the other party, etc. I mean, like, like it should be quite obvious that, that it, it, it's, it, it's more efficient. But how much? I mean, like, can you give me a con concrete number, like uh, how much efficient? So, so, so many of those decisions and like way more compared with private sector you have to do by heart or using your heart. And, uh, and it was funny, I mean, when I, when I introduced this system and the people had to start justifying uh, their, their uh, how to say, investment needs, that was the emotion I, I mostly felt. That was like a fat monkey, like, like like listening, like okay, I know you're lying, but like continue, <laughs> because uh, the people who have never uh, forced to think on business terms, they can't do that. Uh, so in the end of the day, the way that that we, um, I'll say, all these ministries and silos are independent in Estonia, but the way how to control them is that the CIO office actually controls investment money. Uh, so CIO has always a saying if, if, you, if you get like investment or not. So uh, I didn't deal with this by myself, it's a, lots of, uh, it's a hard work, so I had a whole team working with that. But, uh, so it's good because uh, you can keep the cost down and uh, you can be very efficient, but uh, you still, you can't, re you can't relay on, on the private sector principles only. So you still have to have a heart. Uh, inside the government. So that was like the first big mistake. Even if you have put up the system like in government, like you still have to have a heart. And uh, from the control perspective, that's I always suggest that it's a, it's a good thing that uh, the governments where CIO is just a position uh, without real power, uh, they can't make a change. But if they control money, everybody wants to be a friend with the CIO. So it's a very smart move. So the second mistake, measure, 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 measure. I mean, if you want to govern, 
if you want to make a change in the system or if you want to be a leader that understands the business and, and, and is able to, to uh, handle it, you need data. You need to know how your business works, how you, you, you're, like, the area you're responsible of, how it works. You need data and transparency. But with government, somehow they hate data. I mean, if you have seen uh, the, the famous BBC uh, uh, comedian uh, serial uh, called Yes, Mr. Minister and Yes, Mr. Prime Minister. So uh, they have a special episode about that, how, how much government officers uh, hate data. Because in government, they are afraid of doing mistake. And uh, some but the mistakes happen, we can't avoid them. Always mistakes happen. So uh, when governments, uh, they think that if, if things are hidden, if, if data is hidden, nobody can blame them uh, because nobody knows. And uh, I was, that was my, my second huge failure. Uh, that thing I was, I mean like, I was four years in the cabinet uh, working as a CIO, but I was not able to push it through. I mean, the, the, if you go to the Estonian Ministry of Economy they, uh, web page, you, you, I mean, like simple questions like, like how many people are using like our service, like e-services, or like are they happy with the service? Like uh, or like how much the providing the service, how much cost? I mean, we don't know. And if you don't know, mistake happen. I mean, it's a famous Estonian mistake that we have a service for Olympic winners that they have to apply for to get the support money. Like so. Like never, nobody calculate like still a small country like how many Olympic winners we have like do we have like one or three I mean like why it has to be an e-service can can it be a call center should it be a call center or like should be actually pay for one person uh, that actually deals with Olympic winners because we it's it's a so rare case like so and as as, as if you don't measure you start doing lousy stuff like this. Uh, Olympic winner example like so and I wasn't able to push it through so if you go to the Ministry of Economy web page you see like uh, like there are like like many unfilled uh, basically it's empty we, there is like less information uh, on the screen and just like uh, mostly empty spots and I wasn't able to push it through and uh, but what it means is that even though I was able to push through the the, 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 the way how we should like, uh, invest and where we should invest and then this business case based think, uh, thinking method if there is no data it's basically it's very hard to do the, the business case and justify the business case and it was a huge failure so uh, I know that the new government already makes like does it better like there are like great tools on the market like uh, one of the companies I'm related now at the moment is called Plumber it's basically answers exactly uh, those, those questions like uh, what, what we, we, we lack but sad I'm not in the government anymore so that was the second like mistake I chosen like the, the measurement thing is not working and the CIO is who is able to make it work in their like institution like in the ministry or like department is, is, is a hero uh, the first mistake uh, monopoly Governments have monopoly, so uh, the thing is that um, uh, if you don't like the service I provide as a government, screw you, go to Finland. I mean like, uh, you can move away if you don't like us. The point is that there is no competition uh, in, in government services because there is only one government. And uh, that makes us lazy. If there is no competition, uh, even though we are, might be hard-working people, uh, still, I mean, doesn't mean that we should care about our citizen. And that's the thing I see a lot, like, happening, like, in all countries. I mean, yes, we provide services. We provide e-services, we provide call centers, we provide uh, uh, back-office services. But if you have a monopoly, you don't have a push to make it perfect. So most of the government services look like this. Yes, it's possible to jump from these stairs to that door, but it's bloody inconvenient. Like, so you should like, 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 
make it happen differently. And another problem what governments have is that, uh, is that magic number, 2.6. Uh, 2.6 is uh, average, uh, average connection point between the citizen and government per year. So uh, the citizen approaches government 2.6 times in average per year. And one of those 2.6 is taxes. So it leaves 1.6. So what I mean by this is that we can't talk about user experience uh, in government sector or in e-services. Uh, how many houses you are building during your life? One? Two? Okay, let's say two. So, so two times you experienced uh, how to apply for construction permit. So uh, what kind of user experience is that that you can say Oh yeah, 10 years ago I, I applied for this construction permit. I still, I still remember how to do that. I mean, think about like 10 years ago, uh, banks, uh, uh, they changed their skins of their self-services quite often. And it was a nightmare because you never could find like, okay, the, 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 the link was here now, where's the link now? I mean like, so, so, and in bank services that you actually use every week, with governments, it's awful, like, so, uh, I mean, applying for driving license, one, one during 10 years, applying for ID card, one time during five years. Like, so, so, uh, so there is no such a thing like, like government service. And, uh, and so instead of pushing everybody to do the E stuff, actually what you should do is you should like, uh, get, like the best service is no service. You're getting married, let's say you're getting married. Uh, and uh, you change the name. So you need new, new documents. How it works at the moment is that you go to the honeymoon and then you come back and then you go to the uh, passport office to get the passport and then you go to the driving license office to get the driving license. So contact, 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 contact. Cost, 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 cost. Instead of that, I mean, we know that they, you, you're getting married. We know it like one month in advance that it's called cooling town period. Nobody used that, like, but it's, it's called cooling town period. Like. And uh, we know that your name will be changed. So like, why not to hand over your, the documents like, after the signature is given to the, to, the, to the marriage paper? Okay, you say that uh, uh, somebody might say no. Fine, but let's measure. Let's measure how many people say no. And what you discover? Less than one couple of 100 couples. So, because one couple might, might change their mind, we torture 99. Why? It should be upside down. Same with taxes. Uh, in Estonia, 96% people declare the taxes electronically. 95% of those 96 don't change anything in the declaration. If they don't change anything in the declaration, can we just send them an SMS saying like the amount of money you're getting or you have to pay is that much? If you don't act during the next 48 hours, we will do the transfer either way. Like, so, uh, so we force to use system only that 5% instead of torturing again like 95%. And that's, that's, the, that's the mindset change that you can't see in the government because having a monopoly doesn't give you a push to make things better. And, uh, and that's why you should, knowing that you can't, like, you can't change that, I mean, like, you can't continuously to make services better, it's, it's a better it, it's, 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 it's the better solution is actually get rid of those solutions. Like, so, I hate government portals. I'm, I'm against government portals. I think they are a very bad idea. Why? Again, this 2.6 times. Uh, if you digitize everything, in our government portal we have gazillion services, like way too many. And then the, even if you are the best usability designer or like UX experience uh, specialist, it doesn't matter. The people use it so rarely that there is no like, pattern in their head how to, how to use that. So whenever they need to interact with the government, they don't go to the government portal. What they do? They Google it. So they Google it. 
and then yeah, they might reach the government portal. But the problem with the government portal is that, like, let's say, here is a government portal, but the service is actually handled by the Minister of Internal Affairs. So the further the service is from the owner, the less is the, 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 the poorer is the quality. So if the service is here, it's right, I mean, like, it's right in, the, in the ministry and they are responsible of the quality of the service, it's way better compared if they are responsible to take care of in a government portal. So uh, it's a way better solution if, uh, if, uh, if like, ministries or institutions, they provide specific solution, like very, really well like, thought through solution and with the best usability to the user according to their own needs. Uh, I mean, th that gives way better results than investing heavily into the government portal. Government portal can be a gate gateway, I mean like a door to, to different, uh, different, different, different sub-portals. But uh, the, the thing that we have one stop shop or like we gather everything in, in one place doesn't work. And I can prove that. But my Talking about monopolies, I mean, what to learn from this, this, this mistake or like, again, like not being able to push uh, ministries uh, for, for better, uh, by providing better services. Uh, I found it too late, but uh, it seems that the only thing what government people are afraid of is public shame. So if you publicly discuss their failures or their like, like, like lousy ideas in Facebook or like in, in, uh, in, 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 in newspapers or radio. I mean, it makes a difference. So, but I, I learned it too late, like, so I wasted a lot of time without knowing that. But yeah, Facebook actually has become very powerful. I mean, uh, if there is a like, state architect complaining about something about in Facebook, it's rapidly you know, captured by, by the newspapers and then it's it's debated all, all over all the country. So uh, it's a good tool against that. So fourth mistake. Uh, there are always people who take advantages. Uh, I won't want to stay here for too long, but uh, we had a goal 10 years ago, more, 13 years ago in Estonia, that we should be so efficient. Estonia should be so efficient that uh, everything uh, has to happen a bit less than three minutes. I mean, uh, we compared it with boiling egg. Right? Uh, whatever you want to, how you want to interact with the government, it should be so simple that it takes less time than boiling egg. Uh, so we use that picture too. To uh, but what happens is that you always have this downside. There are always people who would like to take advantage of the system and who are very smart and very clever and they are, they are really able to like, crack down, okay, this new, new, like, very innovative law happened, so we can cheat now this or that way. So they, that's their like, main focus, that's what they're looking for. So for example, we were so proud of that, it's op like opening a company in Estonia takes less than like 30, like 30 minutes. So it's, it's a little more than three minutes, but still like it's a very limited time, like uh, just 13, 15 minutes and you have a company in Estonia. But, so it's hard to increase VAT fraud. If it's easy to create a company, it's easy to create the VAT fraud and then leave the company. And uh, it was huge. Like we were losing money in a way that uh, the amount of money we were losing, if we could use that, we could double all the teachers' salaries in Estonia. Double, not like 20% up, but double. So uh, it was huge. And it was uh, like the with, with that, we had the biggest gap. Uh, we had like problems with other taxes also, but like that, that was the big, biggest gap. And um, to solve that, I think in Latvia you have the same kind of solution, but uh, the problem of the governments is that they don't have data. They can't understand how the money moves and where, and it's very hard to control that. So we forced companies to start uh, like reporting uh, all the deals, the like business to business deals to the government and, uh, and after that it was very easy, easy and simple uh, in an automated way to track down uh, where, where those, um, I'll say, 
mistakes are actually happening. But my mistake was there is that um, you have to understand the whole picture. There are always people uh, who is like uh, who, you, who you can't be, who you, who you can't trust. Um, I said like I had full political support, and I had. I mean, like I was able to push through this kind of innovation. But at the same time, there were like people who uh, like loudly, proudly advocated against that uh, because if you take away hundreds of millions of euros from the market because of the, you, you stop the fraud, it's painful for somebody. And uh, for those who is painful, they will find a way how to lobby or support a proper idiot uh, who actually starts to advocate against that. So whenever you do something, uh, uh, you have to know the full picture and you have to know that, uh, that I'll say, People who are actually jerks or like who actually cheat, they can actually be very vocal and they can go against you. And you have to be extremely strong like uh, to still continue your road and push the things through. So, uh, so that was my mistake. I, I thought like if you have like full political support, it's easy to push things through. Uh, it's not. I mean, uh, the residents, for example, uh, the cabinet, the cabinet decided that uh, um, legal, it's now legal to open up a bank account uh, without physically coming to Estonia. So we thought, okay, like the Prime Minister, everybody said like, yes, like, we should do it. And then like seven, eight months later, you discover that Minister of Finance still doesn't, has still like, like done anything to make it happen. So uh, and then you understand, okay, like, like, uh, like, you can't trust. I mean, like, there might be some kind of internal fight between the parties or whatever, like, that stops you to, to do deliver great stuff. So, again, a mistake. But great stuff, I think, I, I like it. I mean, this is Estonian gas industry and, and ex expresses the, the, the way, like, how this data could be used uh, to actually provide better government models. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, we were able, together with the Minister of Finance and, and, and the Tax Authorities, to, to, to push it through. There will be a huge next innovation from Estonia anytime soon, I can promise. So, the fifth mistake, uh, the last one I, I, I chose uh, the dialogue is broken between the government and partners. Uh, in our region, those IT systems, they become more and more complicated. There will be more and more dependencies. So, uh, governments are not able to attract the best talent. So, uh, you still have to rely on, on, on partners. But as you don't measure, uh, the problem is that uh, IT sector is so young, it's so immature compared, for example, with construction, that uh, if you go to the court uh, complaining that this partner didn't provide me a proper service, uh, in IT field, uh, government always lose. I mean, always the partner can say that uh, no, the scope was changed. You know, like this button here, like it need, it was needed to rem like move like three pixels to the right. I mean, like you know that it's like it's a minimal minimum change. Like uh, it doesn't cost anything. No, I mean it was the change of scope. I mean, like you you always lose that. And, uh, and the outcome is that uh, if you don't measure, if you don't have a, 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 a proper project management on top of that, uh, you will end up with arguments, complaints and, and, and everything. And uh, I think this should be restarted, like the way how you communicate, how you do like, your partnership. I mean, I even, I come from private sector, so I even developed, uh, or like my team developed, uh, more like more open, more better uh, like contract template for the private sector, but they started to use that. So uh, I mean, we just saw in Estonia a case where the largest IT project, one of the partners who had to de deliver that, just walked away on, in the middle of the project, and you can't change that. Like you can't like avoid the situation. So uh, so the same thing. I mean, like. Why we use this stuff? For whom we're doing this stuff? How we measure it? Like, uh, what's the benefit we are giving? This needs to be the goal 
not only for the ministry or the department, it should be going for the partner. And I, I, there should be a system to, that supports that. And I, I was failing to, to implement that. So that's a, uh, that's a failure. And uh, yeah, as a conclusion, uh, what I can promise, we have been very innovative in Estonia during the last four years and we had we created extremely interesting and, and fun stuff. But the society always more, wants more. So they there always will be a hunger uh, for new solutions. So uh, so if you're CIO and if you think that okay I will do this reform and that reform, the third one and after that they all should be happy, I can tell you. They won't be. So even if you deliver them like totally new type of sol solution, like out of the box solution, like that guy, I really love him. I mean, uh, that's the like motto I'm 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 living by. So uh, so if you, if you want to solve complicated problems, like you can't use the same mindset that we use to create those problems. Like so, we have to have different mindset. And it has led us to like like, like totally new type of uh, innovations, like. Like they embassy that that they can actually reboot the country from the cloud, like, and we can survive as a nation even if we don't control our our, 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 our country or like land. So, yeah, it might sound naive, but but if you think about if you think about the future, if you think about like the, the world is developing uh, itself, uh, how like like the physical world is not like the physical location not so important anymore. And people always buy better services like where it's more convenient for them. I mean, 20 years ago, the best way to buy uh, music was to go to the local uh, music store and buy a CD. They do you know where to buy a CD today. So nobody buys CDs. Like you pay 10 euros per month and you get like unlimited uh, uh, access to the, all the music in the world through Spotify. So. You chose this solution because it's more convenient. Uber is more, or Taxify is more convenient compared with old taxi system. Credit card is more convenient than cash. I mean, you go for more convenient. So the same will happen with government services. People will go there where it's more convenient and practical and better. I mean, if I can get like uh, education from MIT without leaving Estonia, compared with I don't, any other education. I should, I mean, I, I, I could use it. I mean, I, I could get MIT education without leaving Estonia. I could get better healthcare in telemedicine if there is a better expert out there. I mean, what it, what it gives us, I mean, there is a continuous competition between the countries and uh, people will start buying government services in the same way how we buy music. Where is better, which more convenient, we buy it from there. So uh, yeah, and that's why the re reason why we, we created this e-residency program, like uh, to make Estonia great again. Like so, uh, we know that we are not able to grow our population through uh, like higher birth rate. We know that we are not able to grow our population through immigration. But uh, so, but we want to grow. We need to grow because if you don't grow your population, amount of people in your country, you can't create more wealth. You need more people. So that's why we invented this. Estonian e residency program that allows foreigners to become like so called e Estonians. And if, as we have digitalized everything in Estonia, like they just can use those, those tools uh, like to run their own company, even though if they live in Tokyo or Berlin or, or Washington DC, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and that, that's the global trend. Like people become more and more global. Today they live here, tomorrow they live there, and uh, they need somebody who takes care of them. So, uh, and I'm asking from you, I mean, like, like uh, if they, today they live here, tomorrow they live there, what's the best, like, I'll say, and they want to run the company, what's the best solution? Company in Luxembourg, company in Estonia, company in Delaware, I mean, they will choose. But it's not, it's not going to connect with, like, like, physical location. They will choose, like, the solution that gives this supports their flexibility to live in one place and another place. That's what will happen. And we were, with this project, uh, obviously, I think it's a failure. I mean, I actually want to reach higher numbers uh, already today. We have run it like two, uh, two years now, a little bit more. 
And uh, we have like around 20,000 e residents and uh, 1,500 companies. I would actually want, like to see at least double of those numbers, but they still good. And uh, I think about it, it's, it, we have like uh, got 3% addition to mower uh, population on I mean, like working age population and to our companies. So we have grown the market, we have shown it's possible. So now it's a question of scale. Now it's a question of marketing, better service, and we know it works. Like there is a need for that. We know that. So we just need to make it happen now. So I mean, continue to think big. And uh, whoever like watches this video, I mean, uh, it was just a fraction of, of uh, stuff we do in Estonia. Uh, if you want to check out more, uh, you can find it from estonia.com. Uh, if you want to become an e-resident, also estonia.com and uh, the children picture you saw before they were my children uh, that's how they look now so uh, it's different and uh, so my message is like don't stop doing babies continue to do babies also like even if we are go virtual the visual, physical world remains and, and it's so it's important and we have like a, a laugh and joy around us like so thank you for having me here in Riga see you soon again Thank you.